Hi there and welcome to yet another Python video. In this Python video, we are going to talk about a built-in module called as Pickle. Now, before we talk about this module and what functionality does it provide, let me first talk about the problem which Pickle tries to solve. Now, as our Python program starts to become complex, we have the need to store the data somewhere, even beyond the life cycle of the program itself. So for example, let's say if I'm, if I'm creating a list or if I'm creating a tuple or a dictionary or an object for that matter, after the program has ended, all of them are deleted or all of them are actually removed from the memory by the memory managers, right? What if I want to store them even when my program exits? Think of a game which you are designing. You may have to store the data related to the levels which the user is playing on or for example, the themes which the user has chosen, the character which user has chosen and so on. Similarly, if you're working on any other project where you may have to store things like, let's say, some custom objects, they may be files. If you're working on some kind of uh, image editing program, you may still have to store that image data uh, as some kind of an object, even beyond the life cycle of your program. So there are so many scenarios. Let me actually talk about one more scenario, which happens to be very common these days. If you are working on machine learning, you may have to store your machine learning models. Uh, you may have to persist them even uh, beyond the life cycle of the program. So to cover all such scenarios, we have got this module called as Pickle. And in this video, we are going to learn how exactly you can store data with the help of Pickle. Okay, so before I talk about the functionality of the Pickle module, let's understand the process of pickling. So what exactly does pickling mean? Pickling simply means that you will take any data structure in the Python, which is present in the memory, and you will convert it into a stream of bytes it will be converted into a byte stream. So it's like uh, serializing the object uh, so that it can be stored, it can be persisted. So for this purpose, in order to achieve this, we have got two primary sets of functions which the pickle module supports. Uh, one is dump and dumps. Similarly, we have got load and loads. As it seems to be a little self-explanatory that dump is used when we have to write, when we have to take an object and we have to write it uh, to a file. And similarly, load is used when we have to load uh, the serialized object from the file back to the Python's memory, like we have to get it back to its original form. So for example, if I had serialized a dictionary, if I want to get it back, that is where I use the load function. Now, if I'm working with in-memory objects, like if I don't want to store something in a file, but I want to seriali uh, serialize it in memory. So what could be the use cases when I want to serialize something in memory only? Uh, the scenarios, for example, if I want to send something over a network, uh, I can use uh, in-memory serialization in such scenarios. I can send it over the network. Then on the other side of the network, the same object can be deserialized into its original form. So in this way, we have got these two sets of functions. And the pickling, uh, in the pickle module, I think these are the most important four functions which you will always have to deal with. Uh, dump, dumps, load, and loads. So always remember, the singular version is used to write to a file and the plural, plural version is used to write uh, in-memory objects. Like, uh, I can't say write in-memory objects, but I can probably use the more precise term that is serialize in-memory objects. So why pickle? I think we have already discussed that you can save complex data structures for later use or to share between processes or to share over the network and so on. If I have to talk about examples, I think I have already given you some great examples. So ML models happens to be one of the most uh, uh, important examples given that uh, AI and data science are becoming more and more relevant these days. Talking about the usage, well, if we talk about the usage, uh, it's very simple. We just have to import the pickle module and we can start calling these functions on top of that. For example, I can simply call pickle.dump, pickle.load and so on. So let's go ahead and look at what other cells have got to offer. Okay, so let's look at our first example here as you can see. We are trying to uh, serialize a list called as numbers. So as you can see that we have imported the pickle module, then we have got a list called as numbers. And here we are trying to write these numbers in the serialized form to a file called as numbers.pkl. Now, as soon as I execute this code, there will be a new file which you will be see, uh, which will be created here. And inside of that file, we will be able to see the serialized number, serialized uh, list. So serialized means that it will be in the form of a byte stream. It will not be in its present form. So it will not no more be a data structure numbers or it will no longer be a data structure 
uh, list, rather it will be a, a stream of bytes. Before I do that, let me actually do one thing. Let me create one more cell here and let me shift this code so that we can actually see the file getting created. Awesome. So let me go ahead and run this code. So I have executed this code as you can see that numbers.pkl has been created for us. Now let's do one more thing actually before going to the speaker.load. Let me do one thing. Can we just do that? Let's say print f.read just to show you that, oh sorry, this has to be a function. I just want to show you that what exactly, uh, how exactly the data is stored inside of this file. Now if I try to open it, it won't be uh, like, I won't be able to open it because this happens to be a binary format and this is not encoded in the, let's say UTF-8, so we are not able to see it. So let's do one thing. Actually, let's do this. Let me create one more cell and let me copy this. So now we are trying to read this file and we'll just print whatever we have read. So let's see. So this is how the data or the, I would say the serialized data is stored as you can see. So this is how uh, the data is present inside of this file. So now let's go ahead, let's try to retrieve the list back from this file. So this is the code for that. We have just opened the file. Uh, this is the very simple logic where we're trying to open the file. And then we are calling this pickle.load and we are passing the file pointer directly. So whatever data structure is there, it will get loaded to loaded numbers and then we will print them. So what was serialized in the beginning? This was serialized and then we are, uh, then now we are trying to get it deserialized once again. So this is 12345 and we should also get 12345 here. So let me go ahead and execute. So as you can see that 1235 has been restored now. It is again in, in its original form, that is the list object, right? So similarly, let's move to the example number two, where we are trying to store a dictionary set and a tuple as a pickle serialized file. So in the previous example, we saw a list. Similarly, we can do for this dict set and tuple. So we have got a dictionary here. So we have got uh, key value pairs, right? Similarly, we have got a set where we have got all the unique values. And similarly, there happens to be a tuple. Now what we can do is we can actually dump all of these together. As you can see that we are dumping dict, set and tuple together uh, into this file called as data.pkl or data.pickle. So as soon as I execute this code, I should be able to see a new file being created with the name data.pkl. So let me go ahead and execute. So as you can see that data has been serialized. So data.pkl contains all these data structures in the serialized format. So now let's try to open them and let's try to read them again. Okay, before that actually we are doing the same activity again. We are trying to see what exactly is stored inside of the file. So this is the binary data which is stored inside of the file. And uh, you can see that some of the things are actually being decoded. So these are the key value pairs as you can see. Cool, so now let's go ahead. Now let's try to uh, deserialize the objects. So as you can see that as soon as I do pickle.load file, I'll be able to retrieve all the data which was stored. Let's do one thing. Let's actually see that what data structure will it uh, load this file to. So before I do this, let me just do a cut. I'll simply say data equals this. Then what I can do is I can say equals data. Now for the time being, let me just do this and let me just try to print the type of the data. So what exactly is the type of this data? So if I do go ahead and execute this, it happens to be a tuple. So why exactly is this a tuple? I'll show you. Because if you see that this is how we had passed the data while we were trying to serialize it. So the tuple contained the data dict, the data set and the data tuple. Now if I go ahead and if I execute the complete code, I'll be able to retrieve all the data which was passed while we were serializing. So as you can see, we have retrieved the dictionary, we have retrieved the set and we have retrieved the tuple as well. So in this way, whenever there is a requirement that you want to store some data, even beyond the life cycle of your program, you can always consider using uh, pickling for that. Coming to the next example here, we are trying to do, we are trying to work with the custom objects. Now, let's say you are working on some custom objects, as I talked about in the beginning of the video as well, that you may have to work with different data types, you may have to work with different classes. The best part is that you can do the same process for those custom data types as well. 
So we are trying to create a custom class here, custom class person, which is having two attributes that is name and age. Okay, let me do this. Yeah, name and age. And then we created an object of type person. Then we stored it or serialized it into a file called as uh, john.pkl. And now what we are trying to do is we are trying to load it back or we are trying to deserialize it. And we have got loaded John. Let me actually try to print this. So let's go ahead and execute this. So as you can see, we have got the person object back and we should be able to uh, access the attributes of this. So for example, I should be able to do print uh, loaded John dot name. Let me spell it correctly. And similarly, if I go ahead, I can actually do age as well. So here we go, John and 30. So all the data has been uh, retrieved or restored. Cool. Let's go ahead, look at example number four, where we are going to do the same with functions also. So the good thing is that we can actually serialize the functions as well. So let's say if you want to share some functions with somebody or in a different process or on a different network, you, uh, you can actually do that. When I say on the different networks, well, there can always be network uh, restrictions stopping you from doing that. So let's not go into that discussion. But the idea is very simple that you can share uh, the serialized data over the network and it can be deserialized again. So here is a very simple function which says greet and it returns hello world. And what I have done is I have opened a file called as function.pkl. I have serialized this function uh, using this pickle.dump. And then I'm trying to deserialize it from the function.pkl file. Now, what do you think will be stored inside of this loaded function? Well, of course, the same function which was serialized will be stored back to this loaded function. And when I try to call it, it should actually output hello world. Let's see what happens. And of course, there will be a file created by the name function.pkl. Let me go ahead and execute it. So as you can see, hello world has been printed here and the file has been created function.pkl. So I hope this example is clear to you. Now comes uh, another example wherein we are going to show you how to work with in-memory objects. So this time I don't want to store these objects, but I, I just want to work with them in memory only. So we have got a dictionary where we have got some keys and values like name Alice, then age 28 and so on. So we are trying to serialize this object. So we have got the serialized data. Then uh, apart from printing this, oh yeah, we have actually done that. So we are printing the type of serialized data. Then we are also printing the serialized data. So let's see what happens. I think by now you already know that the data will be serialized into a group of bytes as we can see here. So this is a sequence of bytes. Uh, which is containing our data, then what we can do is we can load it back using the loads function. So always remember this distinction between the singular and plural versions of these functions. Whenever you have to work with a file, always use the singular version. Whenever you are working with in-memory objects, always use the plural version. So let's go ahead and just hit here. Yeah. So as you can see, the dictionary has been uh, restored in its original form from these bytes. So in this format, we can actually store any kind of complex objects. And now comes an important example. So let me actually install scikit-learn. So for those of you who are not aware of scikit-learn, well, scikit-learn happens to be a Python package, which is helpful with machine learning algorithms. And what I'm trying to show you here is how exactly can you serialize a trained machine learning model? So if you are not a data scientist, you can probably ignore this example. But if, if you happen to belong to a data science field, then this example may be very helpful for you. So we are not going to go into the details of what exactly uh, is getting done here, like how exactly the model is getting trained and so on. But what I'm trying to show is that, uh, so we have got some data sets inside of scikit-learn only. So this is that very basic data set on which we are trying to uh, train this model. So as you can see, we are splitting the data into training and te test sets. Then we are trying to standardize the features uh, with again some built-in functions. But this is the important point for us where we are actually training the classifier. As you can see, CLF is a logistic regression classifier. So this is basically a classification based model. So as you can see that the model has been trained. This is the line where the model is getting trained when we call the fit uh, method. Now we are trying to serialize the trained model and we are going to store it in the file called as logistic regression model.pkl. Uh, so once this model has been trained, we can actually share it uh, to any other parts of the project. We can share it over a network. We can store it in a file and we can share that file with everybody. Then whosoever is on the receiving end of that file, they don't need to train the model again. 
they can actually deserialize the model and they can use it. Now imagine that you belong to a data team and you are working with a team which is responsible for deploying your models. So this can be one of the ways for sharing your models, even though there are many other ways. But this happens to be one of the simplest ways wherein you can actually create a pickle file out of your trained model. You can share it with your uh, API team or your web team and they should be able to deserialize it and use it for making predictions. So first of all, let me just go ahead and execute this. So this seems to be taking some time, maybe because of the fact that there are a lot of steps. So let's just wait for some time. So yeah, so logistic regression uh, file has been created. So it is basically logistic regression model.pkl file. And now what we are going to do is now we are going to deserialize. So this is what your web or API team will have to do in case you follow the instructions, which I just mentioned that you can uh, train a model, you can share it with your uh, like other project teams with the help of this pickle file. Now what they will have to do is they'll have to just do this, that they will have to first of all deserialize the data, then they will be getting the loaded model and then they will be able to use that loaded model to make the predictions. So let me go ahead and execute this. So as you can see, these are the predictions. Now what exactly these predictions mean? Uh, that is definitely something for the, uh, I would say for some other video. So, but yeah, to give you a hint, well, here we are trying to just predict whether somebody is having a cancer or not. And one zero is basically, uh, when we say classification, it basically gives us the result as a true or a false value where one may mean one thing and zero may mean the other thing. So that is what classification means. And we'll definitely cover more about it in some other video where we talk about machine learning models. But yeah, this is it for this video. I hope you understood what exactly pickling of data means, how you can do, how you can pickle objects, how you can, uh, let's say, deserialize them back to their original form. And if you have understood all of this, I think it should be very easy for you uh, now to basically store your objects or save your objects on the file system. Uh, and yes, that's it for this video. I hope you really liked all the examples which I have presented. If that is the case, I request that you like and share the video and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and bye-bye.